On day one, I spawned in as a baby porcupine. I had a beautiful porcupine wife in a wonderful home in our forest hole. Suddenly, I heard an explosion. My entire home was on fire and my wife was injured. <laughs> what just happened? <coughs> the forest gods, they're angry, look. I turned around to see a massive forest god whose eyes were filled with rage. Where's my sacrifice, forest dweller? You live in my domain and do not pay your homage. What? I just live a quiet life with my wife. I didn't know forest gods were a thing. Silence! The god smacked me away and then he took my wife. This one will do. <laughs> hey, give me back my wife. He approached me and hit me to half a heart. Stop, painful, you're not strong enough, let me go. Aha, uh -huh. you know the law of the forest. Only the strong survive. I'll see you again soon for your next home at you owe me, little porcupine. <laughs> hey, come back! No, no! Just as quickly as I'd met my wife, I had lost her. Even worse, the fire was beginning to grow. I gotta get out of here. I quickly made my way out of the house and away from the forest fire, but without shelter, I was as good as a food delivery for any predators in the nearby area. That's when I saw a group of squirrels running away. Hey, are you guys running from the Orion too? No, we're running from him. Uh-oh, I think I spoke a problem into existence. A giant hungry grizzly bear approached. Mmm, no more mere morsels. This time I'll have a full meal. Wait, fella, I don't think you want to eat me. Enough talking! Time for action! My only defense was my quills. I fought the grizzly bear tooth and nail to keep him off me, but he was hitting hard. I knew my only real option was to escape or I'd be on the dinner menu. I made a run for it. After a little bit of travel, I decided to settle down for day one and build a small shelter. If I wasn't strong enough to take down a grizzly bear, how would I be able to take down a forest god? It was time to build a plan to save my wife before the forest god sacrificed her in his evil ritual. If the myths were true, I'd only have 100 days to rescue my wife. Before we pursue our adventures, let's check out today's sponsor, Honkai Impact 3rd. Honkai Impact 3rd is a popular mobile RPG available on iOS, Android, and PC. Featuring brand new battle suits such as Harisher of Finality Kiana, wielding her pistols and sword. Harisher of Origin May, specializing in wing blade mastery. The two new battle suits also have hidden Easter eggs. Check them out in game. You're not going to want to miss out. Also introducing part one's final story chapter toward a new tomorrow. During this new event, complete story chapter 30 and gain access to Harisher of Origins character card. Completing new chapter missions unlocks the bridge theme, Train to the Future, Crystal, and Stygan Nymph's new outfit, Estonia in Spring. Try out different event modes, unlocking shop tokens, which can be exchanged for various other rewards. For their fifth anniversary, Honkai Impact 3rds hosting local events such as Present of Miss Pink. Attending this event, you can enjoy special bubble tea and macaroons provided by shops in the USA, Germany, France, and the UK. And to the anniversary website below for a chance to win many other gifts. Download the game now using the link below and redeem code MKFINAL to receive 30 crystals, 2,888 asteroid, a Harrisher trial card for free, and there will be more valuable bundles for new players. Now let's return to our porcupine adventures. On day two, I woke up feeling very exhausted. I decided it'd be a good idea to begin working on a bit of a mine so that iron would be a feasible option to upgrade in the near future. I spent some time digging out the main opening and burrowing my way into a cave system. I used torches to light the way. Hello, is anyone there? I wasn't alone. However, there were hostile mobs inhabiting the cave. I fought them off and made my way back up. This iron collection's taken a lot longer than I thought. As I stepped outside, I realized my hillside had been surrounded by wolves. Oh, uh, hey fellas. Look, we can probably talk about this. We're hungry, starving. Yeah, yep, I, um, I, I get that, but, but look, man, I'm really not tasty at all. Oh, the contraire. I've never had porcupine at all. I'd love to give it a little taste. Or, 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 what if we didn't do that? I was surrounded. There was no way I was going to make it out of this without a fight. Unless... Wait, fellas, you're hungry, right? Now you was here must be deaf. Yes, we're starving. What if I offered you an alternative? I'll collect a bunch of steaks for you and bring it back to you. Then you don't have to eat me. Mm-mm-mm. All right, you have until tonight. We'll be back, little porcupine. Best you keep to your word. 
Woo! Crisis averted. But now I had a new problem. I had to find enough cows to feed a bunch of ravenous starving wolves. I started my journey through the forest, hunting down every cow I could find using my quill sprays and collecting all of the steak. I was running out of time as the sun began setting. Oh, come on. Is a stack going to be enough? Oi, you looking for meat? Yeah, I need more than this to get to the wolves or they're going to eat me. Problem after problem, eh? Well, look, the grizzly's got a meat storage around here he keeps for hibernating in the winter. It should be in his den somewhere. He's out hunting right now. You may be able to steal it from him. Uh, it'll have to do. The squirrel led me to the grizzly's den. In there. But move quickly, he'll be back any minute. I snuck in carefully, ramaged through his supplies. Meat! I found it! Oh no. What's that sound? Ah, uh, tough day of bullying the innocent. Time to wind down it. Wait a minute. Why is myself moved? I had to think fast to get out of there. Quick, painful, come up with something. Grisilda, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Just taking a bear shower. Give me a minute. Ah, okay. You sound sick. You all right? Um, no, actually. Can you go out and get me some hay? I need something comfortable to sleep on. Dang, I just got home too. Uh, I guess I don't mind slaughtering innocent villagers. All right, I'll be back. I ran out of the den as fast as I could, and upon returning home, the wolves were there waiting. Now how about it? Where's our meat, little one? Here you go, gents. Plenty of steak for ya. Huh. Well, butter my biscuit. He stuck to his word. The wolves seemed satisfied. This gave me a great idea. If I could trade with the wolves, I could convince them to help me take out the grizzly bear. Defeating him would let me roam the forested area a little safer. Hey, gents, you interested in some more meat? What'd you have in mind? There's a grizzly bear that roams this part of the forest, causing me a lot of trouble. I'm sure he takes a lot of the food you guys could potentially be eating as well. What if we work together to hunt him down? Hmm. Well, fellas, we've never had the help of a porcupine before. Maybe it'd be possible. All right, you have yourself a deal. Perfect. And so my new alliance was formed. I slept in for the day to regain energy for tomorrow's hunt. On day three, I woke up ready for my big battle. The wolves also seem energized from yesterday's feast. We set out that morning on the hunt for the grizzly bear. After a little bit of travel, we discovered the bear's den. He's gotta be in there hibernating or something. Let's find him. Huh? The entrance closed and was blocked off. That's when I heard a low growl. Who dares enter my home? Ah, a home delivery of little snacks? Wonderful. All right, guys, let's get him. The battle begun. The grizzly was terrifyingly powerful. Luckily, it wasn't just me, and I had my pack of wolves helping me defeat him. Utilizing my quills, I was able to do quite a lot of damage to this grizzly bear. And after fighting him for a little bit longer, we were able to take him down. We did it. We have defeated the grizzly bear. As we originally agreed upon, I let the wolves take almost the entirety of the meat, which was perfect for me being a vegetarian. I, however, got to keep the pelt and claws, which I took home. Once I got home, however, I had a new problem. Oh man, my stomach's growling. I'm hungry. I decided to spend the rest of the day building a farm and beginning to grow wheat, carrots, and potatoes. In the morning, I'd figured out how to put these claws and pelt to good use. As I went to sleep, I had a horrible dream. Huh? Where am I? You. You're upsetting the natural order of the forest. You can't go around hurting apex predators. You are prey. You? You kidnapped my wife. Where is she? I want my wife back. She's with me in the spirit realm, and you'll never find her. Now stop your antics at once. If defeating a bunch of bullies makes you angry in the process, then I must be doing the right thing. Rah! You will pay for this, little porcupine. Your challenges will only grow in difficulty. On the 99th day of the season, your wife will be nothing but forest dust. Not if there's no forest left for you to scatter her in. I'll destroy your entire food chain if I have to. Ah, get out of my presence. Wake him up. Gah! I woke up after my nightmare on day four with newfound strength. I knew what I needed to do. I needed to keep angering the forest god and growing stronger. Maybe I could force him to face me when I was powerful enough to take him down. In the meantime, I needed to figure out how to put this bear pelt and bear claws to good use. I wasn't much of a crafter myself, and my porcupine hands weren't very coordinated. But I did know a group of mammals who were pretty amazing crafters. The beavers. I made my way to the riverside to try and find some local beavers, but the river was unusually quiet. Oh man! 
The beaver's dam was breached and water was spilling into their enclosure. Beavers hate running water. It looked like they were all hard at work trying to patch things up, but they didn't have enough wood. I'll help you guys. Don't worry. Hey, all right. To patch this, I need a stack of wood, a stack of stone, and leather. Got it. I'm on it. Luckily, I already had a lot of leather left over from the cow hunt. I made my way over to the nearby trees, began chopping, and after some time, I got all the wood needed. I then dug a hole big enough to mine down and collected the cobble the beavers needed too. When I returned, I handed the head beaver the supplies. Thanks, man. We're on it. Come on, boys. We got the supplies. Seal the hole. Ah, yes. You did it. Woohoo! Thanks to you. We appreciate you jumping in to help. How can we return the favor? Well, actually, I came to you guys for your help. See, I have this bear pelt and claws. I need fashioned into something useful to help make me stronger. Whoa, where'd you get this? I had to kill a grizzly bear. Whoa, you? You must be one feisty porcupine. Here, I can turn these into something useful for you. Follow me. The beaver led me to his home. He began hammering away and crafting. Beavers were the best craftsmen in the forest, so I knew whatever he made would make a world of a difference. After a few hours, he'd finished. Here. Put these on. Okay, whoa. When I looked at myself, my form had completely changed. Dude, I'm thick and burly now, and my claws are huge. I feel more powerful. Wait, I've got more hearts and armor rating now? This is awesome. Just like a bear, bud. Now you're pretty powerful. Things will think twice before messing with you. May I ask, what do you need to be so strong for anyway? I've got to save my wife. Orion, the forest god, took her. I see. That's a daunting task taking on a god. You'll need to be a lot stronger. Well, what do you suggest? Well, you keep bringing me the animal parts of apex predators and I'll keep upgrading you. And so an alliance was formed. I was going to set out to be some kind of Frankenstein's monster with the help of a mad beaver scientist and a master craftsman. A few more predators would more than likely be enough to help me take Orion head on. I traveled back home after thanking the beaver clan, thinking I'd have a brisk and peaceful walk home. But I was stopped by the wolves. Hey, fellas, how can I help you? We're hungry again, boy. Man, with no grizzly bear around these parts, we run the forest now. I'm thinking it's about time we put you on the menu. <laughs> That's a big mistake. I then put these claws and new pelt defenses to use. The fight began. As you can see, I was outnumbered by three different wolves, although I was a lot stronger now. Using my quills and new bear claws, I was able to take them down. After defeating the wolves, I was clear and able to make it home. I settled in the night of day four and went to sleep comfortably in my humble abode. On day five, I woke up with crazy levels of motivation. I was feeling powerful and ready to take on the world. I harvested my crops and set out on a journey looking for the next apex predator. While adventuring out, I stumbled upon a village. The villagers looked distressed. I stopped to speak with one. Hey, is everything okay? No, man. The whole village has been under attack by this pesky skunk. He's been spraying everyone for fun. That's odd. I couldn't just let the villagers continue living like this. They had families and wives too. Plus, this guy sounded like a menace. I can help you handle him. Really? If you did, man, it'd be a big help. He's got a den around here somewhere. I'm on it. And so I started looking around for clues of where the skunk might be. Hmm, no sign of him currently in the village. How often does he come around? normally comes out at night and sneaks into homes to spray people. It's gross. Got it. So that's the plan. A stakeout until the nighttime so I could catch this troll red-handed. I waited until the sun set, and then when nighttime finally came about, things were all too quiet. Hmm, I'm starting to think this skunk's maybe moved on. Doesn't seem like he's... That's it! That's our guy! I ran and made my way over to the hut that had the screaming, and there he was. Skunk! Huh? Hey, get back here! The skunk made a break for it. I ran and chased after him, hot on his tail. As we got out into the forest, he made his way into a maze. I'd lost him as quickly as the chase had begun. Dang it! How am I gonna find him in here? Guess going in is the only option. I then began making my way through the maze. Knowing very well this could be a trap I had to pursue to put a stop to this skunk. I'd made it to what seemed to be a clearing, and the skunk was there. Made it this far, huh? Well, if the maze didn't stop you, I guess I'll have to. Wait, man, we can talk about this. No talking, only spray. The skunk had given me no choice. The boss fight had begun. As you can see, the skunk had a very powerful and poisonous spray, so I had to be very careful. I was able to do a ton of damage using my quills and bear claw. After fighting back and forth and dodging as much poison as I could, I was finally able to take down the skunk. 
Once I defeated the skunk, he dropped what looked to be a scent gland of some sort. Ew, this smells horrible. It smells like my friend Forrest Bono. Oh, wait, a note. The book says your purpose is to terrorize the village people and keep them from expanding further into my domain. The skunk had been working for Orion the whole time. That's why he wouldn't listen to reason. Now I didn't feel so bad about taking him down at all. I returned to the village people to show them the proof that the deed was done. They let me keep the scent gland as a trophy of my achievement, a perfect potential improvement for the beavers to craft with. I made my way home that night and took a much needed rest. On day six, I awoke and made my way back to the beavers camp. It was time to affix this skunk gland to me somehow and gain a new ability. When I arrived at the beaver camp, I noticed they were missing again. Ah, they must be off fixing something. I guess I can wait a little bit. Help! Oh no, that's gotta be the beaver! I made my way to the sound of his screaming. It's okay, buddy, I'm coming to save you. Where are you? Help! He's gotta be close. Oh no, oh no, that's not my friend, that's a yeti! I thought they were only a myth! You disturb the balance of Orion's Everglades. You will perish. The Yeti attacked. I did everything in my power to fend it off, but the fight was too close. Uh, I need help. I got you, brother. My beaver friend hopped into the fight and saved my life. Together, we've defeated the Yeti. Man, that was crazy. He had your voice and everything. What was that? I know. The Yeti are a mythical creature from Orion's spirit world domain. If they're attacking, it means Orion is slowly growing annoyed and has probably sent them after you. They can mimic the sounds of your friends and normally hunt in groups. Come on, let's get back to the house. We then made our way back home. I showed my beaver friend the skunk gland and he began working. While he was hard at work crafting, I studied some of the books on a shelf about yetis and Orion's other creatures. I'd learned yetis were some of Orion's sacred defenders sent when there were threats against the forest. And the more I went around disturbing the natural order, the more of them I'd be seeing, alongside other mythical creatures. Stay until the end of the video to see every mythical creature I have to face in order to save my wife. It's finished. Here. Sick! A new ability? Skunk spray! I now obtain the power to spray my opponents with noxious gas that would poison them. This would be just what I needed to tilt the odds in my favor against my new enemy, the Yetis. Once I entered the door to my home, I immediately crashed and slept until the next day. Day 7. It had officially been a week since Orion took my wife from me. I needed to work harder. It was time to do something drastic. I needed to take down more of the apex predators of the forest to get Orion's attention. I needed him to face me and I had to get stronger in the process. The only other predator I knew of was located deep in the taiga, the mountain lion. I packed what I could up from the base and began the trek through the forest to the taiga's edge. Normally, the snow would have been far too cold for a regular porcupine, but the grizzly's hide gave me so much needed warmth through the frigid winds and icy terrain. Trekking through the taiga would be impossible to do in a day. For starters, this biome was huge and I had no idea where this mountain lion was. Second, I'd have to rest every few hundred blocks to reheat up, even with the grizzly bear's fur. Over the course of two days, I'd covered 25% of the taiga's terrain. By day eight, I'd realized it wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to find the mountain lion by just roaming around aimlessly. I needed something to track it. Wait, mountain lions have to hunt. The nearby deer were the bait I needed. Wait, why are they running? Oh no, another yeti. <laughs> I was surrounded. Orion sends his regards. You've done enough tampering with the sacred order, little fuzzball. It's time to mount you on our lord's wall. Not if I can help it. Skunk spray! Ah, my eyes! The skunk spray turned out to be way more important than I thought. I definitely wouldn't be able to hold off those yetis. As you can see, another outnumbered fight, but they were no match for my overpowered skunk spray, bear claw, and quill abilities. I'd taken out the entire group on my own and felt accomplished. Oh. What? A snowy village in the taiga! I made my way in and the villagers welcomed me, having heard what I did for the forest villagers. They gave me a nice mound to camp out in with its own campfire. I slept peacefully on day 8 to conclude the day. My search for the mountain lion would begin again in the morning. I spent days 9 through 12 helping run errands around the village camp and building up their small civilization in hopes of getting any information on the mountain lion's whereabouts. Apparently, to the villagers, the mountain lion was a predator they purposely avoided. And as a result, they didn't have much info on its whereabouts. I'd also spoken to everybody about the mountain lion. Not a single person had kept tabs on it. But I wasn't going to be discouraged. One more night's rest and I'd continue my search. I woke up on day 12 to the sounds of screaming. The trees were moving. 
moving? Magical treemen were attacking the village. I had to help. Before I could dive into the fight, a villager stopped me. You've got to run, little one. They're far too powerful for you. I wasn't going to let that stop me. I had to try. I wasn't going to keep letting the mythical creatures of Orion's forest bully people. I was going to prove I could... Oh, snap. They really hit hard. Run! I was lucky I was able to escape the village on time. A new enemy? Stronger than the Yeti? Orion meant business if he was sending ancient tree entities at me. I needed to find this mountain lion stat. But where was it? I spent the rest of day 12 searching for signs of the mountain lion. And I was about to give up and set a new camp in the frozen taiga. I noticed something floating. Floating meat? Wait, the deer! Something had hunted the deer. Perhaps it was a yeti. Or maybe it was the elusive mountain lion? I went to sleep that night, knowing I was on the right track. On day 13, I woke up and noticed my camp had been looted. Most of my food supplies were gone. Something came through and stole everything. How was I going to survive the frozen landscape if I was going to starve? Wait, what's that in the distance? A raccoon? He was carrying my stuff. Hey, thief! The chase was on. I knew I had to catch this thief as he took everything I had. Ah, please don't hurt me, man. Give me back my stuff, bro. Why'd you rob me? I could have starved. Dude, I'm starving too. Ever since the Yeti started roaming the forest, everyone's too afraid to forage. Huh, so the Yetis are ruining everything for everyone, huh? Yeah, and now with the Treeman, things are getting bad. It's every omnivore for themselves, bro. Wait, maybe we can help each other. You somehow carried everything in my camp in that little knapsack of yours. Look, I'm not going to hurt you. You come with me and help me find this mountain lion and travel with me. And I'll make sure we're both fed and protected. Mountain lion? No way, bro. That's asking to die. This isn't a regular survival world, bro. If I die, that's it. It's over. Don't worry, I've got you. What other option do you even have? It's either track a mountain lion down with me or die to some crazy tree men or yeti. After taking a moment to think on it, the raccoon decided to join me on my adventure. As it turned out, not only could he store every item I needed him to hold, he was also an amazing tracker. He'd spot in the mountain lion tracks and beckoned me to follow him. By day 15, we finally spotted him for the first time. There it is, the lion. Come on, let's watch it hunt. Maybe we can learn a thing or two. The mountain lion was graceful, stealthy, and quick. Exactly something Orion would design to keep the general population of the taiga mobs low. As the lion completed its hunt, we realized this thing was beefy. Oh no, I think I'm gonna seize. You're kidding, right? Uh, shoot! Uh-oh, run! The mountain lion chased us hard. A little skunk spray definitely wasn't gonna be enough to handle this thing. We needed a better plan. Once we got far enough away, it let off. Oh man, at least we know where he lives and hunts around now, right? You're insane. Look, there's no way we're taking that thing head on. I say we set up a trap. Something serious so we can at least have an advantage in the fight. All right. What do you have in mind? We spent the rest of day 15 collecting the resources we needed to prepare for the perfect trap. On day 16, we awoke and had everything ready. All right. Here's the plan. I need you to play bait. What? Absolutely not. Just trust me, man. Trust the process. Bruh. After a little convincing, my raccoon friend was ready. He ran around the area we had last spotted the mountain lion holding raw meat chanting. Come on out, ugly. I know you're stalking me. I sat perched on the mountainside ready. I whistled to signal. Here goes. My raccoon friend ran straight to the trap we had prepared. The mountain lion fell for it effortlessly. He didn't expect a thing. Now what? Honestly, I didn't think we'd make it this far. I was not expecting this to actually work. Uh, painful? Oh crap, the mountain lion broke out of the cage. You really thought some rusty old chin would hold me down? I guess Pokemon's are stupid. I'm going to enjoy feasting on your corpse. And just like that, the fight began. Rack and I versus the mountain lion. As you can see, he had some special abilities himself. But utilizing my bear claws, skunk spray, and quills, I was able to do a lot of damage. And after fighting him for a little bit longer, Rack and I were able to take him out. If it wasn't for this grizzly hide in your help rack, I'd have been mincemeat. I can't believe we took that thing out. What's the plan now? When Orion catches wind of this, he's not going to be happy. We got to haul this thing back to the beaver camp ASAP so I can get some upgrades crafted and take on the next predator. Next predator? As in we're doing this again? Oh yeah, the mountain lion's just the start. I need to get my wife back and the only way to do that is defeating Orion. We're fighting a god? You must be eating too many mushrooms, mate. Remember, Rack, trust the process. Come on, let's go.
On day 17, I introduced my raccoon friend to the beaver clan. Hiya, I'm Rack. Where'd you find this one? <laughs> he was actually stealing from me originally. Ah, I see. Uh, keep him away from my things, will you? Of course. <laughs> After getting well acquainted, the beavers told me it'd take a few days for them to prep my new upgrades. So in the meantime, me and Rack moved shop from my original base to a new home within the beaver town. Come on, Rack. Let's get to building. Oh, man. What are we going for? An A-frame or maybe a rancher-styled home? What about... Rack, just build, bro. Got it. After a few days of building, my form upgrade was ready. Painful. Rack, come inside. Check it out. Suit up, bud. Give this one a test. Oh, man, you're starting to look like Frankenstein's monster. Whoa, I feel lighter or are my legs just stronger? A little bit of both. With these adjustments, you'll be moving a lot faster and farther. Not to mention the new roar. Roar? I gave my new ability a test run and nearly blew the boys away. Whoa, watch where you aim that thing. The permanent speed boost was already sick, but the roar was just the icing on the cake. Come on, Rack, let's go rest up. We've been traveling for quite a while, and I think we've earned a small break. You're telling me. On day 23, I awoke to the sound of fighting. Huh? What's going on? It's an invasion. The camp's under attack. Orion's monsters found us. Oh, crap. I walked outside to see the beaver camp in absolute flames. Treemen and yetis were swarming the entire place. Painful. Rack. Help! Rack, you get the beavers, get them to safety. I'll take care of the monsters. On it! Utilizing my porcupine quills, I was able to damage all of them at once, and I was able to do a ton of damage. I was able to push enough of them back. Orion's army started retreating. Jeez, how did they find us? I don't know, but this won't be the last of them. I need to clean up what I can and gather the survivors. I can stay and help! No, you need to carry on with your goal. You've got a wife to save, remember? Look, I think your next target should be the Boa, king of the deep forest. He's a slippery one, but killing him will definitely net you some nice upgrades and make Orion even angrier. When you defeat him, bring me his skin. All right, I'm on it. Good luck then, and if anything happens, find a way to contact me. You know what biome i'm gonna be in rack let's go and we spent the next few days traveling into the deep forest say painful why did you move to the everglades anyway my wife and i were just looking for a nice biome to settle down in somewhere comfortable and pretty our old tree house was wonderful man i wish you could have seen it what are you going to do if defeating orion means destroying the forest I won't destroy the forest. If anything, the forest will have a new structure. All animals will live in harmony. No more senseless violence from egoed up predators trying to please a mad god. Ah, I awoke on day 29 ready to... Wait a minute, where's Rack? Rack? Uh, hello? Hold on, a ransom note. If you want your little spotted friend back, come into the deep forest at these coordinates. A gang of foxes had kidnapped my friend. I set out into the forest on the hunt for my friend back. After days of travel, I'd arrived at the coordinates. Hello? Anybody there? Haha, <laughs> we got him. You're surrounded. Give up your quest and stop disturbing Orion's Everglades. What? You work for Orion? I'm not gonna give up. I'm going to save my wife and friend. Now let him go or you're getting the quills. You're outnumbered. And you're outclassed. And just like that, Orion sent his evil group of foxes to try to take me down, but they were nowhere near powerful enough. After tons of fighting, I defeated the entire fox gang and freed Rack. Thank you, Painful, but we've gotta run. Why? I've defeated all the foxes. Oh. My goodness. If you want to do something right, I guess you've got to do it yourself. Hello, little disturbances. Enjoy your last breath. Painful, run! Ah! We dodged the blast from Orion, but had to keep moving. Run! After barely surviving an explosion, Orion then started chasing us down. He even followed us over a river, but after running away for a while, we were able to get away from him. Okay, I think we've lost him. Painful, man, are you sure you want to carry on? This mission feels more and more like you're not going to make it out alive. I'll do anything for my wife, anything for the freedom of the animals in the forest. We will carry on. Come on, we've got a snake to find. Oh man, this guy's insane. It's day 35 and Rack and I had just survived an encounter with the forest god himself, Orion. Our travels landed us deep within the rooted forest where we discovered another village. Welcome to the Deep Roots Village, little ones. Enjoy your stays. I'm starting to notice a trend here. Aren't you the voice of the other guy? Uh, 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 you, you mean my cousin of the Ice Village? Probably met him, right? Right. 
Right, come on, Rack. Maybe if we trade enough with the villagers, we can get some information on the whereabouts of the snake. A few days had passed, trading, talking, grinding, and tending to the needs of the village people. Multiple conversations had led us down this rabbit hole of their village's myths and legends. Supposedly, the boa hid himself away deep in the forest and only goes after stray travelers who risk venturing deep into the depths at night. That sounds horrible. I'm assuming you're just going to dive right in then? Absolutely. We'll be heading into the heart of the deep-rooted forest tonight. Of course. Remind me why I chose to help you again. Once nightfall hit, we were on our way. Night 40, deep into the ancestral forest. We'd spent days 41 to 44 searching and ran into absolutely nothing. Maybe the villagers were wrong. Perhaps the stories were truly myths? Wait a minute. Where's Rack? Rack, come on, man. Don't tell me you got kidnapped again. Oh, snap. Help me. The snake's real. I've got you. Yeah. He's slithering away. Get him. Don't let him get away from us, Rack. Easier said than done. I just started breathing again. Come on, let's go. He's fast. How is something with no legs this fast? Dude, you're asking science questions when we're literally fighting ancient yetis and tree men. I can't reach him. He's out of hit range. Ugh. We chased after the snake in a high speed intense chase. <laughs> Look, he slithered off into that burrow. We gotta go in. You really think it's a good idea to go into a burrow after one of the largest predators we've encountered? Period? We've made it this far off of bad ideas, haven't we? Come on, one more can't hurt. And yet, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. On day 45, we began exploring the burrow. This is pretty spacious. You know, in Canada, this place would cost a couple million dollars to buy out. What's Canada? It's like a giant tundra biome with ridiculously high taxes. Why would anyone want to live there? Well, I guess when you put it that way... Silence. Snake, where is he? Didn't the villagers say he could go invisible or something? Watch out, behind you! He can go invisible with his skin! Ah! Uh, Alright, that's how you want to play things? Let's do it then. As you can see, this is no normal snake. As soon as we started the fight, I automatically got stuck because he swirled up around me. Luckily, I was able to break out of it with my quill ability. As you can see though, the snake venom does a lot of damage, nearly taking me down. But the power between Rack and I was too much for him. Ah! No, Orion will harvest my soul. Tough cookies, bro. Should have thought about that before hurting my friend. Huh. That slithery jerk finally got what was coming to him. We defeated the snake and taken out yet another one of Orion's predators of the forest. I had a feeling this particular one would set Orion off, big time. We then made our way straight back home to the beaver camp that night. By day 46, we'd made it to the beaver camp, carrying the remains of the mythical snake. Whoa, quite the haul. I see you successfully took the bow out. How'd it go? A long end painful story. Whoever wrote that joke sucks. Yeah, uh, anyway, what can we do with this? Just as the legends foretold, the snake's got a camouflage of some sort. But was it good for that, aren't they? Oh, this'll be a nice one. Give me a few days to work on this carcass. Sweet. Since we were staying here a few days, I think it'd be a good idea if me and Rack fortified the camp, eh? Just in case Orion sends another wave of his men over. More work, yay! Come on, no whining now. We've got a beaver clan to protect. And so Rack and I spent the next few days upgrading the beaver encampment and fortifying it with walls. By the time we'd finished, my new ability had been completed. Give it a go. I call it John Cena mode. Why is that? Because now nobody can see me. Wait, do you guys hear that? It's a loud stomping. Orion, he's here. We ran outside to meet the forest god. So, this is the little encampment aiding and abetting my nemesis, huh? Nemesis status, huh? That's quite the upgrade from little porcupine. So what are you gonna do? Kill us? I've come to warn you. Continue down the path you're on, little porcupine, and there won't be an animal in the forest I won't send after you. No stone will be left unturned. I will find you, and I will kill you. Well, bud, I'm right here. Why don't you try me now? Ha ha ha! You're quite silly if you think I'd be here in a form other than spirit. Rest well, little one. The wrath of the gods is on the way. Ha 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 ha! No problem for us, right guys? I, uh, I think we need to start prepping an army. I think I need new pants. 
Days 52 to 59 were tough. We spent the week training the entire beaver camp in combat techniques, while the head beaver focused on outfitting his clanmates in armor. By day 59, I was confident in the camp's ability to defend itself. The beaver warriors were fierce. Guys, I think we're ready. Perfect timing, ready the troops. A massive upbringing of Orion's army was outside the walls, led by a Yeti captain. Surrender to Orion's reign or face retribution. I'll surrender over my cold, dead carcass. So be it. Charge! Well, here goes nothing. With the help of Rack and the beavers, we went to work, fighting off all of the tree ants and taking down some of the yetis. But this was no easy work. It took quite a while, and we had sacrificed a lot of beavers, but eventually we were able to overcome and defeat the remaining foes. I can't believe we did it. We may have a chance after all. A lone dying yeti had some choice final words for us. Silly hedgehog. Hey, I'm a porcupine. No matter, your efforts were futile. For if the Everglades cannot be owned by Orion, they will be dismantled by the humans. Annihilation comes. Dude, I just want my wife back. Soon there will be no forest for your wife to return home to. Beware the humans. What does he mean? Boss, there's been reports of a logging crew approaching. This battle's not over yet. How far away are they? A day tops! Things are about to get real! Logging crew? Big metal machine. Lot bigger than our army over there. Whatever was coming was powerful, and I had a feeling my Frankenstein animal part setup wasn't going to be enough to take this one on alone. After spending the previous day cleaning up and repairing what we could, I finally heard it. A low mechanical rumble. Something gnarly was approaching. Oh, oh no. It's a giant tractor? It's bringing down the trees! Come on! I ran out into the clearing to meet it halfway and take it on, but the mechanical beast seemed impenetrable. Gah! Nothing's working! You've got to get it to follow you. Anger it somehow. All right, uh, uh, tires! That seemed to work! Uh-oh, this thing's fast! The lake, that's it! Come on, come on, you big idiot, follow! Uh, yes! Woohoo! We did it! That's a multi-million dollar loss right there. That'll keep humans out for a long time. It's just us and Orion now. I think I could get in there and salvage some parts. It'd be nice to work with actually smelted iron for once. Something player made. I'm down, man. Anything I can do to help? How about you and Rack work on upgrading the forge for me? I'm gonna need a whole lot of lava. We're on it, right, Rack? Oh boy, another crazy mini-adventure. I assume no isn't an option. Let's go! Rack and I spent the next week gathering as much lava as we could from caves beneath the surface, making sure not to lose any on the way home to wild roaming yetis or tree men. By day 68, the forge was complete, and so was my new upgrade. Check this out. Incredible, ain't it? Whoa, I feel like Iron Man. I'm the Iron Porcupine. What now? We bring the fight to Orion. Even he can't compete with man-made technology. How do we get to him? We need to find the pathway to Orion's River, home of the true Everglades. Only his faithful eagle will know the way. Well, faithful doesn't sound like the guy's just gonna give us a map to get there. No, you'll have to track him down and slay him. With his wings, we can outfit you and they'll guide you there. You may even be able to carry Rack. Great, hope you're not afraid of heights, Rack. Come on, we've got an eagle to track down. It was day 69 and we began tracking of the mythical eagle. So, how does one track an eagle? I assume we just listen for loud screeching in the American National Anthem? What? Never mind. Let's just keep a lookout for shadows or something overhead. It's gotta be around here somewhere. The beaver said he patrols every part of the forest to make sure the food chain stays balanced. And with how much trouble we've caused, he's probably working overtime. The next few days were full of traveling, camping, yeti and spider attacks, and essentially nothing more. That is, until day 74. Oh, uh, what's that sound? I hear wings. Wait, look up. It's an elytra. It's a piston plane? No, it's the eagle. Come on! We've got to chase it down! Come on, we've got to keep up! It's a freaking eagle, bro! Easier said than done! Wait, look! It's a parkour! That's how we can catch him! Come on! It was time to put the mountain lion legs to true test. Up we go! We can do this! Don't fall! We can do this! Don't fall! Now for camouflage so he doesn't see me. And one snipe from the metal cool shot! Bam! Down he goes! You! We can do this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. You either take us to Orion's river, or I'll tear those wings off myself. Bring it on! Gah! 
And so this battle commenced, this time against an eagle. Once again, utilizing my quills, my skunk spray, and bear claws, I was able to do a ton of damage to this eagle. And after attacking it with a few more quill abilities, I was able to take it out. Eagle down, perfect. Time to bring this home. Good stuff, Rack. I literally did nothing. On day 76, Rack and I returned to the beaver colony. Wow, you did it. Incredible. Well, you know the drill. Couple of days and I'll have this sorted. This one's gonna be special. Every upgrade was special, brother. Take your time. I walked outside and enjoyed the view. This could be my last time relaxing in a peaceful forest. How are you feeling? I'm just ready to see my wife, man. I'm exhausted. I feel like I've been at war for a long time. Well, aren't you coming up on a hundred days of this? Almost, yeah. Orion said on the hundredth day, he's sacrificing her. I've got about two weeks left realistically if I'm gonna save her. I'm hoping those wings lead us to her and I can kick his face in from there. It'll be all right, man. Like you said, trust the process. Thanks, Rack. And so we patiently waited the four days and by day 80, my wings were done. Wow, you look like an angel. An angel who's ready to fight a god. We ready, Rack? Finding the shrine will be difficult. I suggest flying around the entire countryside. Nobody has any real idea of where it is. It could take you a few weeks to locate. Wouldn't hurt talking to village folk along the way. Maybe they'll know something. On it. Hopefully we find it sooner than then. I'm running out of time. If this is the last time I see you, Beaver, just know you've been a great friend. Just returning the favors owed, brother. Now go free the Everglades and save your wife. And so we took off, ready to begin the final leg of our adventure. From days 81 to 84, we focused on heading to the last villages we'd visited prior. All three have been plagued by legions of Orion's creatures, but with my new power of flight, they were easily swept up alongside my other abilities. Freeing the villages, however, didn't grant us any clues to the shrine. Seems like this myth was a little too far-fetched, even for the village people. By day 85, I was getting worried we were running out of time. We'd made camp on a hilltop, and Rack had left to forage. Suddenly, he'd come running back into the camp. I've got a lead. It's at the edge of the world. The edge of it all, huh? Leave it to that coward Orion to hide at the outer reaches of the map. Come on, we'll make our way there in the morning. Pack everything and rest up. We have a long journey ahead. We'd slept well, and in the morning, we began our journey to the shrine's supposed whereabouts. I have a feeling we're going to have another challenge to face on the way there. By day 91, Rack and I had stopped by the river to get a drink. Man, wonder how much weight I've lost. With how much you eat, you've probably gained weight. <laughs> Wait. What's that noise? You, your disrespect of Orion's Everglades shall not be tolerated. Your life will be liberated in the name of the Forest God. What does that even mean? I think it means suit up and fight. There's a lot of them, Rack. We don't really have another option. Come on. Although we were surrounded, it's not like nothing that we haven't been through before. We kind of got used to being outnumbered. And using our special abilities, we were able to do a lot of damage to the Minotaurs. And after a few more quill shots, we were able to take them out. <coughs> Your death will mark the end of the Divine Age. My gods will it. Your god is about to learn why they call me painful. Good night, horsey. And so Rack and I continued our travel until we were almost at the shrine. By day 96, we'd finally arrived at the shrine. Wow, this place is incredible. Uh, painful? You're not gonna like this. What? It's got an inscription on it. Let me read it. In order to enter the Lord's Everglades, a sacrifice must be made? The life of a forest dweller. It wants one of us to die to enter the realm of Orion. What kind of sick joke is this? Dude, this is insane. There was a long pause and silence between us. Then things settled in for me. I wanted my wife back by any means necessary. I'm doing it. I'm going in. What? But dude, you'll literally be dead. Like permanently. No respawning. So be it. If it saves my wife and the animals of the forest, then it's worth it. What's one life for thousands more anyway? Plus, my wife gets hers back. You're insane, bro. Are you sure? I've never been more sure about anything in my life. I then made the plunge and I could feel my soul pass. Whoa, I'm... I'm dead? This is it though. Orion's River. I think I've got less than a few days left. I need to find Orion. Not so fast. Nobody traverses Orion's River with malintent. More of you guys? Uh, how many times am I gonna have to teach you the lesson, old man? I was then attacked by some Minotaurs, Ents, and some more Yetis, but they were no match for my strength. With a couple more quill shots, I was able to take him out with ease. 
we're off the riffraff now. Now, time for Orion. After a day of travel, I'd arrive at the precipice of it all. I stood outside Orion's castle. This was it. Tomorrow marks the final day. It was time to rest and prepare, but that night, I had a nightmare. Painful, help me, he's got me. Orion, let her go. Ah, uh, you're too late, little one. Now, you both die. No! <sighs> I then woke up from my nightmare. It was the morning of day 99. Today was the final push, the final face-off. All right, here we go. Orion, free my wife now. We finally meet. This will be fulfilling. The hunt, it calls me. The battle against Orion has commenced. It's finally time to avenge my wife. I started off by using my quill ability and some of my skunk spray. As he did do a lot of damage, I tried to kite him around a little bit and use some more of my quills. Thankfully, I had a lot of extra hearts Otherwise, I'd stand no chance against Orion's power. And with a few more quill shots, I was able to take out Orion. It's over. It's finally over. My wife, are you all right? Yes, but you're all ethereal. What happened? I made the ultimate sacrifice. The way home is clear. Just walk up the river and you'll return home. But what about you? I... I don't feel so good. <laughs> Even though day 100 marked the end of my journey, it marked the beginning for the animals across the entire forest. Orion's Everglades were free, and so were the animals of the forest. Far and wide, in every herbivore, omnivore, and carnivore, roam free in perfect harmony, unmanaged by a ruthless sacrificial god.